Hello mates, I'm Oliver from Blentus.com and this time we'll continue to learn about rigging, more specifically how to rig a leg and a foot. We'll see what are forward and inverse kinematics, how to set them up and how to build a nice skeleton and setup to be able to control our legs, uh, well, uh, our characters ones. <laughs> If you want to learn more about rigging, uh, don't forget to check out my other tutorial on how to rig eyes, in case you didn't yet. If you are a beginner with rigging, these tutorials are for you. To finish it, we'll get the very basics of skinning uh, to be able to deform our model with the skeleton. Exciting stuff, indeed. Uh, let's go for it. Alright, so here I have this very basic leg and I'm going to start by uh, uh, selecting it and naming it correctly, right? Because uh, as you will see later in this tutorial, it's very important to name stuff so it's easier to work. So instead of cylinder, I'm going to call this uh, leg model, for example, right? Just to have some kind of name that uh, help us recognizing uh, what it's all about, <laughs> just checking the name. All right, so once this is done, uh, I'm going to start by creating an armature. So let's go to the front view. Let's actually clear some space here. Press T to hide that panel and press N to hide this one. And press Shift A to create an armature single bone. If we press C or set, uh, I don't actually know how it's uh, turn is. Uh, let me check it. This letter, I guess is C. Okay, so you, we go to the wireframe mode. You can also go from here, from solid to wireframe. All right, and we can see here that we already created an armature. So what we need to do is to create some armature that uh, fits our leg. So let's go to the side view, which is the most representative one in this case. Go into the edit mode with tab, or we can just switch from here. And what I'm going to do is to just bring this up here. And why do I do this? Because I want uh, a parent uh, for my whole leg, all right? Like, uh, you know, imitating that we have uh, some hips here, all right? So this is going to be the hips. Now, this armature will be called um, leg rig. All right. So what I need to do now is to just create a new bone. If we press Shift A inside the edit mode of uh, an armature, it will just create a new bone in the cursor position. All right, so let's go here. And let's just adapt it to our leg. So. Let's do something like this. This one will be here at the top of the leg. And this other one here will be right here where the articulation with the foot is. And from here, I'm going to uh, press E and extrude it until the uh, top of the, of the foot. All right, and you may be asking, hey, but you only have two bones. Yeah, but I like it. I like to do it this way because now it's very easy to just select this one, subdivide it and just select this joint and adapt it to the articulation of the knee. And this one just adapt it here to where we want the articulation of the between the foot and the toe. All right, which is roughly right there. All right. So we have this. And as you can see, it fits our model. So what I'm going to do now is to just uh, take, actually take the rig, press M and move it to the second layer. This way we can switch between layers or activate two, both of them, but we can just focus on the, on the, on the armature. All right, so now before uh, continuing, I'm going to go to the edit mode again, and I'm going to create the uh, target and the pole. And in a while, uh, uh, as soon as I create them, I will explain to you what is the difference between a forward kinematic and an inverse kinematic and why we are creating these two bones now. So I select this joint here. And I just go ahead and create this little bone and the same here with the knee and take it forward. All right. Now I select these two bones. All right. Uh, as you can see, uh, this bone needs to be free. And this one as well. Uh, right now they are connected, so if we move them, they affect the whole structure. So I need to just uh, clear the parent for this one. So Alt P and clear parent. And we can move it a little forward. And this one, Alt P, 
clear parent and we are going to leave it right here because we need it to be absolutely aligned with this joint all right you will see for uh, for what in a while uh, now what happens is that if we just move this here when we apply the IK constraint this joint will jump to this position and we don't want that and that is why I create these bones by extruding them from here and from here because this helps me uh, make sure that they are completely absolutely aligned with the original structure all right, I don't need to create a new bone and align it manually because I know that it's completely aligned because I extruded, I extruded it from that position. Okay, so now I have these bones. The next step will be to name everything correctly. So because then we will access uh, these bones from the menus and it's better if we have them named correctly. Uh, so it's not, you know, very difficult to, to find the names. So let's go up here to this one. And we can go here to the bone and from here, let's call it hips. Uh, or we can just here in the viewport, press N and look for it. All right, here we are. So here we have the name of the full armature, which is leg rig. And here we have the name of the bone uh, just next to the bone symbol. So we can control it here. This will be the leg. This will be the ankle. This will be the IK pole. This will be IK target. You will understand all this in a second. This will be the foot. And this one will be the toe. All right. So now let me just explain to you uh, what is the difference between forward kinematics and uh, inverse kinematics. So basically, what happens with a forward kinematic is that you go forward, all right, from the top to the bottom. So if you want to pose this leg, you go from the top, then this bone, then this one, and then this one. This is a forward kinematics. Now, uh, the inverse kinematics would be something like it's not set up yet, but uh, uh, once we set up in a in a in a moment, you will see the result. And is that if we move this uh, only this object, the rest of the chain will move accordingly to adapt to that movement, all right? So it would be something like this, just by moving this single bone, all right? We can select everything and rest at this position and rotation with Alt-G and Alt-R. All right, so now we have everything correctly named and, and uh, all the stuff. Uh, let's just create the uh, IK constraint. So there are two ways to create an I, I, I get constraint. So the first one is to go here to the bones constraints and add an inverse kinematics. All right, we can just give it a name like leg IK or whatever. And here we need to select the target and the pole. That's why I called these bones target and pole. The pole will um, control the rotation of the leg and the target will control the position, all right? So uh, what I'm gonna do is to just go here and you can see how we have to select here the armature, so which is leg rig. And now we need to select a bone inside this uh, armature. So we'll just go here and very easily we can find here IK target, all right? Or we can just start typing target and this is why naming things correctly is very, very useful. So now we have the IK target. And uh, also we need to do another thing in edit mode, which is just select this one, select this one, control P and keep offset because I want the hips to be the father of, of everything. All right, so we can move the leg from the foot and from the hips. All right, and I'll, actually if I move the hips, I want the leg to follow. So now this is what's happening. Uh, you can see this line all right, this yellow discontinued line from the foot to the hips. And if we move the target, this is what happens, right? So this is an inverse kinematics. Now, it is affecting uh, more than what we want, all right? It's also rotating the hips and we only want it to affect the leg. So what we need to do is to go to the chain length and here we need to input the number of bones uh, that are affected by this uh, chain, all right? 
in this case two bones one and two all right so now you can see that this yellow line goes only up to the hips so if we move this exactly and if we move the hips it also adapts this is one of the uh, greatest advantages of the inverse kinematics and is that if we have a character moving we can have it standing with the foot on the floor we are now going to to fix the the foot to rig the foot because right now it only follows the his parent which is this one so it's rotating uh you know crazy if we move this it's not standing on the floor all right but this articulation is now we need to set up the pole target all right but before i'm just going to um close this all right because I'm going to show you the second way of adding uh, inverse kinematics. So we select the target and we select the ankle, all right, or, or the, the object, the, <clears throat> let's say, the object to which I want to add the IK constraint. And so now with these two bones selected, I just press Shift-I to active bone, exactly. And we already have an IK constraint set up with our target, right? So the first bone we select is the target, and the second one is the one that will receive the constraint. Uh, now we can just change here the chain length, and that's it. Now let's see what the pole target is all about. So let's add this to the leg rig and select the bone, which is pole. All right, and you can see what happens. So uh, basically now when we move this, the leg will rotate. Now what happens is that we created the uh, front bone probably and um, and this uh, pole bone from different views. So the orientation are different. Okay, so what we can do to fix this instead of just going, we could go and rotate the bones, uh, you know, internally. All right, we show the axis and uh, with control R, you can roll the bones. All right, and we can, we could probably fix it like that. But instead, I'm going to go for a... Um, uh, uh, more, you know, um, easier way than this tutorial, right? Because that is kind of more advanced. And for some things, we really need it to be aligned if we want uh, to, to not have headaches <laughs> during the animation or during the rigging process. But uh, in this case, I'm just going to show you this option, all right? So you can see that here in pole angle, we can just control the amount of uh, initial rotation that the leg will have. So we can see that this is just minus 90 degrees and this is working now completely right so if we move this we can control the rotation of the leg so with this one we control the position and with this one we can control the rotation let's reset everything all right so we already have our base leg now, what we need to do is to fix uh, this issue here. And for that, what I'm going to do is to create a few bones that will allow you uh, allow us to control uh, a lot easier, you know, in a lot easier way, the, the foot. So for that, we're going to show for a while this uh, model in wireframe mode. <clears throat> Go into enter mode and in, into the edit mode and I'm going to create a new bone. All right, this bone will start right here in the heel, and here it will finish right here in the toe, all right? Just in the limit where the uh, foot touches the ground. And now what I need to do is to just extrude this, and I'm going to select this bone, press Shift S, cursor to select it, Right, not the bone, the joint. All right, and now we select this one, and actually let's extrude it again. All right, so later we don't mix the bones, and press Shift S, selection to cursor. So now we know that this bone is exactly aligned to the uh, articulation of the foot, and now this bone, uh, we could have it, you know, aligned to the foot like this, but actually I'm going to just have it. Yeah, something like this. So it overpass. It doesn't matter where it is because uh, only the rotation of this bone will affect something. And uh, now let me show you what this is for. If we go to post mode, 
you can see that this with this bone we are going to control the foot from the heel with this one we are going to uh, rotate it from the toe and with this one we are going to just uh, do the what, what is called usually the roll of the of the foot we could go even farther and add two little bones all right two little bones uh, one from here to here and another one in the other way so we could also uh, rotate the foot from from these borders from the sides which is called a uh, bank usually the banking of the foot but uh, in this case we are going to try to keep it uh, a little simple so you can just get the basics and and, and see how it works all right so basically now we are going uh, to just focus again on the on the rig go here to the edit mode and what I'm gonna do is to uh, actually create a couple more bones here because I want these two bones to be affected by an IK constraint. So let's go to the side view again, select these two bones and extrude. And there we go, two little ones. Okay. So let's just press Alt P and clear parent. Note that here uh, I just selected the one that uh, goes uh, the joint between this bone and this bone and not the one here because otherwise if I selected the two joints it would select uh, this uh, bone in the middle all right so uh, maybe you want to do this uh, one joint at a time all right so now we have here two constraints all right so we can go back to the post mode and just select this one this one shift i to active bone and the chain length will be just one we only want to uh, this this uh, IK to affect this foot. Okay. Now select this one, this one, shift I to active bone, and one of length. So now this one only affects the toe. That's uh, perfectly fine. Now let's go here. And what I'm gonna do is to go again to the edit mode, and let's just from here extrude create another bone here all right maybe something like this a little bigger and uh, I do it a little a little bigger okay we could align it and put it perfectly aligned there but if we make it a little bigger in this case uh, it doesn't matter because we are only going to use the rotation of it um, it allows us to in a uh, wireframe mode we can see the both both bones all right and it's very easy to to just select it so what I'm going to do with this is that this one will be the chilled child of this one. So control P and this will be actually connected. That's fine. So let's see what happens if we go to the post mode. That's right. And we can move this freely. That's perfectly fine. So let's see this very, very quickly. This one here needs to be parented to this one. Control P, keep offset. That's right. And this one needs to be parented to this one. Control P, keep offset. That's right. And now the IK constraint of the food will be parented to this one. So Control P, keep offset. And now uh, just to finish this, uh, let's name these guys. So this one uh, will be the hill. Heel, actually, heel row, toe row, and foot row. You can use uh, whatever names you want, right? The point of the namings is that you know what you are calling uh, each one. And this one could be like IK um, foot zero one and IK toe zero one, whatever. All right, these guys actually are not needed at all right now, so uh, it doesn't matter. And let's go to the post mode and see what happens now. So with this one, you can see how we can 
rotate our foot from the heel. We can rotate it from the toe. We can rotate the toe apart. And if we select this one, we can roll the foot from that point. Uh, the point of this is that if you, you see that if I rotate it more than uh, what the leg allows me to rotate, they will slide, all right? The same as if we move this, the they will be stretched, all right? So you need to be careful with that. That, that is why it's very important to have the bones really very well aligned, all right? So it's uh, just easier to make them fit. Now, this uh, opted here will follow this one. Keep offset, all right? And this will make sure that when we rotate this one, the foot, the leg will follow it, all right? And then if we want to make some adjustment, we can just uh, rotate this a little bit. Now, you can see here how when we rotate the leg, these bones of the foot are, um, you know, are also rotating. Look at that. They are rotating. This will just twist our foot, all right? So what I need to do is to take this bone here. Let's go here to the bone properties and here deactivate inner rotation. So this will make this uh, bone not to follow the rotation of the of its father. You can see that. All right. Let's just reset everything and let's make sure everything works as expected. So you can see how if we rotate the 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 leg, it doesn't affect the bone, bones of the foot. Let's just try how this looks like. <clears throat> All right. Okay. Keep in mind that there are some possibilities that for some very specific poses or or something, these bones will rotate. All right. We'll do something like this. Uh, what we need to do for that is to add just to this IK of this bone. Just add another, uh, you know, put something like this, okay, and like this. And uh, with this, you will have poles for that eye case. So this will make sure that your foot uh, will not rotate in that situation. But for now, uh, let's keep it simple. So uh, now just to end it, uh, let's uh, select this bone, uh, cursor to select it, add a new bone. And we have this bone here. This one will follow this one because this bone will be called foot control. Foot control. This means that with this one, we are going to move the whole feet. Wow, you can, it looks like a transformer or something. <laughs> uh, so we can move the whole feet, and with these ones, we can just rotate it. All right to move from the toe, from the heel, or whatever. But we can also, uh, you know, it's, it's, very, it's very cool. This setup is very cool because we can rotate the foot from the heel, we can rotate from the middle, or we can rotate it from the, um, from the top, right? From the, from the tip of the toe, which is pretty nice. Now, uh, before we finish, we need some things to be done. Right. For example, uh, we need to decide which ones of these bones are going to uh, deform our model, right? Because we are going to 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 make this uh, object, or right, this chain, deform our model. So let's press, uh, let's save the scene before we mess it up. <laughs> okay. So now what I need to do is to uh, just select these guys. Okay. These ones, these ones are the ones that are going to deform the model, all right? The two from the leg, the foot, and the toe. So I'm going to move these guys just to the second layer, for example. So they are not here anymore. Okay, now I need to select the ones that I don't need at all, all right? Because these are the ones that I like to call helper objects or something like that, helper bones, because these three guys here uh, are not needed anymore. Uh, I mean, unless we need to tweak the rig or something, we don't need these guys at all. For animation, we are only going to use these controls. And, uh, you know, we don't need these ones for rigging uh, at all anymore because they are already set up. So uh, 
just send them to the last layer, which is the layer reserved for that kind of stuff. Well, it's not reserved or anything, but it's just a workflow uh, method, you know. That way you know that everything that you don't need at all is in the last layer, which is the crap to hide layer or the, the trash layer. All right, name it as you want. Uh, okay, so these ones are the controls. So I really want the controls to be in the first layer, all right? So then when we have the model and we when we have everything weighted, uh, what I'm going to do is to just go here to the armature and we are only going to see these ones, which are the ones that I can control because we are not going to touch these uh, ones at all and uh, these ones are not needed anymore. So I just need these ones for animation. So what I'm going to do now is to just uh, turn on all of the layers and I'm going to do Alt W and here you have some options for the bones. All right, let's let's actually go uh, here to the bone properties and down here you can see how the form option is turned on. All right, if I go to Alt W the form, I will disable it for everyone. All right, because if I go right now and uh, add this uh, this to the to the model as an armature, all of the objects, even even this one, will deform the mesh, and we don't want that. We just want uh, the four main ones to deform the mesh. The rest of them are just for control. All right. So what I need to do, maybe select everything, and let's actually go here. So bone settings and the form. You can see here that it's in Shift W, and it's actually in Shift W, but I found out that there is some kind of little bug or something that the deform option or some of these options doesn't affect all the selected bones, only the active one. All right, so, but with Alt W, it actually works. And let's check it out, the form. So now you can see that any bone that we select is not deforming, all right? Now we can just go to the armature here, select just the this layer, right, which is the one with the bones that need to deform, and press Alt W and the form. So these ones now, here in the bones, uh, wow, they are not deforming. What's up with this? Let's try with Shift W, deform. Wow, maybe I, I was wrong and it was the opposite. Maybe it only works with uh, Shift D, W. Well, I don't know, whatever, all right? <laughs> you can just go here to the menu or just... Um, Use Shift W or Alt W. I, I, I guess I was confused by the fact that with the two shortcuts, you get the same menu. All right. Okay. So now these bones deform the model. So if we, um, if we just go out, uh, let's, uh, let me just go here to the, open this. So I can just see this uh, object behind. Let's go to the solid mode. And what I'm going to do is to select the armature and actually go here to the object menu and activate x-ray so we can see the bones over the, m the model all right from every point of view and what i also can do is to go here to the armature and change the display method so they are not so intrusive something like this all right this is perfect so now uh, it doesn't matter if we are in the armature mode or in object mode, in the edit mode. I mean, in the edit mode, we, we cannot do it, right? But it doesn't matter if we are in object mode or in post mode. So what I need to do is to just select the mesh. Now with shift, select the armature, press control P. And there are several options to add the skin. And this is the skinning part of uh, all this. So we can just go ahead and add the automatic weights. All right, and now we could already try how this works. So let's show the controls and let's see what happens if we go to the post mode. And you can see how it's already deforming it and looks like it works pretty nice. Wow, I was going to show you a little about weight painting, but it looks like it works already perfectly. So there's no need for that. Um, all right, so you can see now how we can control our leg. Uh, maybe we, we can fix a little the, the weights, so I can show you that. 
All right, so basically we need these bones activated here. And it's better if we are in post mode when we are weight painting because that allows us to um, select the bones from the weight paint mode. All right, so we select the, the mesh. Oh, by the way, keep in mind that you can add the armature also as, um, well, the armature should be before the subsurf modifier. All right, keep that in mind. Now, uh, we could just add here an armature modifier and just come here and select the rig that we wanted to 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 deform, all right? So it's that simple, but it's, it's a lot faster if you, well, not a lot, but it's faster if you just select the model, then the, the bones and uh, just parent it. So let's go to the weight paint. We can just switch from here, all right, to weight paint, or we can just press control and tap. And here you can see, this is what I, uh, what I talked about before. If you press uh, left click, you can paint weights, you can see, uh, just control set to, to, to disable that. And if you have uh, the armature in post mode, you can just go ahead like this and select the bones with right click uh, to just select the bone that you are painting the weights for. So uh, the red color is the vertices. If, if, if we press uh, C in the keyboard, instead of going to the wireframe mode, what is showing up is uh, the, the vertices and the edges of the model, all right, which is pretty nice. Uh, so the red ones are the ones that are completely affected by the selected bone. And the blue ones are the ones that are not affected at all, all right. So this is a weight zero and this is a weight one. The colors in the middle, like orange is like, a, uh, yeah, it has a lot of effect, but not everything. The green ones are like, uh, I mean, the, the yellow ones are like uh, in the middle, right? 0.5 or so. Uh, green are, you know, already not that much effect. And uh, 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 light blue is uh, almost not effect at all. Dark blue is completely no effect. So I'm, I'm going to fix this. And if we press T in the, in the viewport, we can have here several uh, options for, it's like texture painting, uh, like... You know, you can add, you can blur the weights, you can, uh, you know, have a normal brush or, you know, there are several ways uh, to, to do it. You can subtract, all right, like this. So we go from uh, a lot of effect to no effect at all. Or we can add, all right, so we can add effect like that. Here we have the radius of, of, the, of the brush. There you have it. We can also change it with F and drag in, left click to accept. And the strength is here. So here is the one uh, of uh, strength, and here is very little uh, effect. Also, we can uh, switch the strength with Shift F. Oh, no, looks like uh, it doesn't. That only works on texture mode. All right, so uh, never mind. What we need to do here is to just uh, fix these things, okay? Because you can see how this bone should affect completely this part. And it's not, right? So right now, if we rotate the leg, this is uh, being deformed. And actually, I'm going to go to the armature and let's uh, open up this layer, okay? Because uh, what is cool about uh, wet painting uh, with, in post mode is that you can uh, right-click and drag and you can see how the bones affect the, 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 the deformations, okay? So you can see that if I move this, it affects the vertices from the heel, and we don't want that. So what I want to do is to go here, add on subtract, subtract at 100% of, uh, you know, the effect, and we start subtracting here. You can see how it's left uh, in dark blue. So that means no effect at all. We can just with F change the radius of the brush. Something like this, okay, perfect, and perfect. So now it should work perfectly. There we go. Now we can just select this one. And this one I want it to affect 100% uh, this part. So let's go here, all right, and we can just start clicking around to get these vertices to be completely affected. You can also uh, change the, um, the, the the weights of the vertices by going to the 
uh, to, to a menu in the edit mode, but that is a little more advanced. We're not going to use that uh, in this tutorial. Also, there is another option here. Uh, let me show uh, ta -ta, options. We can activate the X mirror, and this basically should, as you can see, mirror the weights from one side to the other. And if we have like uh, the same bone, uh, let's say that we have the two legs, all right? This bone should be called exactly the same in one side and the other. There are several um, terminations of the name or, or prefixes or suffixes uh, that Blender allows us to, to name the right side and the left side. So if we have, for example, this bone would be called like, uh, well, I don't know, sadly, uh, let's go to the bone just to check it out. Okay, so this will be the foot. So it would be, for example, the foot dot R or the foot dot R or maybe dot R without caps. All right, so these are some kind of suffixes or prefixes that Blender can allow and will recognize that is the same bone but in the other side of the body. So what it will do is to just mirror the weights from this uh, that we paint in this bone to the same bone in the other side of the of the body. So we don't have to weight uh, this uh, these bones twice, which is very very handy. So let's go like this. Okay, and now this one should be affected 100 percent. And okay. That looks pretty nice to me. Mm, actually, let's... Let's probably... You know... Select this other bone. These are completely affected by that. And this has no effect at all in this part here. Let's see how this behaves now. Not really good. So this is the the point of uh, weight painting. You know, you need to keep tweaking until you get the point. Also, you can uh, do some kind of basic animation. Uh, so you can just scrap through the frames and see how it deforms and keep painting. All right. So you don't need to go and select the bones and rotate them or whatever. So it's um, it's up to you how you want to do it. For complex models, uh, I usually do animations so I can uh, weight paint and just see how the animation works. All right, I I'm not talking about complex animations, just like uh, you know, moving the arm uh, up and down, just to see how it works when it's up and when it's down. All right, so yeah, very useful. Um, okay, so let's select this one and let's add a little of weight, like 0.2. Right, not too much, but just enough so it doesn't deform a lot there. Okay, and it actually shouldn't affect this part here. Let's add a little more. You can see how it starts getting some green to orange color. Okay, well, I think this is enough. So let's just try it out. All right here, uh, the next steps would be, for example, to limit the the you know the rotations of this um, of these bones. Okay, so we only. Uh, when we press R, it only rotates in the axis that we want it to rotate, okay, and uh, things like that. You can see how this rotates from the heel. Uh, this jump that the leg does is basically only because the pole target is crossing the line, all right? We need to keep it always in the foreground, all right? Otherwise, it will jump to, see, to look at it. it. It is normal is what we made it for. <laughs> Alright, so you can see how it uh, this rig was uh, pretty nicely. Uh, you can rotate it from the tip of the of the toe. This is the row. This is from the heel. 
up and down and here are the hips you can see how without moving the foot the 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 leg and the foot uh, follows the you know they don't stay there <laughs> and stretch in the leg which is pretty nice um, so yeah this is it um, now what I need to do is to basically go here and just show up the controls I need uh, also what we could do of course is to just you know add some custom shapes like we did in the in the iRig tutorial and uh, I will add them and but just will you know put it uh, accelerated because uh, if you want to know how I do them uh, you can check the other tutorial and just see how I did that uh, all right to add it to, to this one and uh, so yeah I'm going to accelerate that part and later show you how it looks like uh, completed done so uh here you have a very basic example of how shapes can help you recognize what uh each thing is for okay like this or you can rotate it from here and now roll it like this uh there is usually an action that uh it's uh, you know from with one slider or just moving one thing here in the viewport you can just do all this movement all right from the rotating from the heel like this to roll so you can very easily by moving one slider achieve all these uh, different movements all right but sometimes it's better to just have the control yourself uh, like this okay so that depends that is pretty advanced also so this moves the toe this is for the um, you know the pole target and this one for moving the hips so as you can see we already have our our rig leg which is nice now imagine rigging a whole character like this so it's uh, as you can see it's kind of funny I enjoy a lot rigging stuff um, I'm not an expert on rigging I indeed know a few things but uh, but I, I'm not an expert actually and and I enjoy a lot uh, doing some uh, basic or sometimes even complex rigs okay because they allow me to you know you know you know it's some kind of challenge and uh, actually it pays off a lot to just once you finish the rig uh, watch that everything is working and everything is in place and behaving like uh, it is expected to behave you know so it's uh, is very very cool so yeah there you have it so I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and uh, make sure to check the website uh, like on Facebook um, you know plus and Google plus uh, share like on uh, YouTube, comment, send me emails, whatever you want, all right? Just uh, interact, is very appreciated. And, um, and yeah, also, you can also subscribe to YouTube, of course. Um, uh, yeah, so I think this is everything. So, yeah, if you want to, to know a little more about rigging, if you didn't watch it yet, you can just check out the first uh, video tutorial I made about rigging just a few weeks ago about how to uh, rig eyes for a character all right it's not just that you read the eyes or the leg is that you uh, start to understand the tools that uh, allows you to do that so you can apply it to whatever you want to rig that's the point so yeah this is uh, done this inverse kinematics is actually what pixar guys use in this uh, lamp animation they have all right uh, actually when they made it uh, first for the for the logo animation a lot of years ago it was actually one of the first things they did with uh, inverse kinematics when it was embedded, right? Because now it may seem something very basic, but back then it was like, wow, you know, the best invention since sliced bread, bread of course. <laughs> All right, so guys, I hope you enjoyed this and see you on the next tutorial. Happy blending.